let's talk about life cycle analysis because this is a new area. We're starting to learn about what really, you know, carbon measurement is a new thing for food, for companies. Uh, so what do we know and what do we not know about life cycle management? What are, what are some things that we might think are, are impactful? So transportation, for example, Wendy, is, uh, those of us who've read Michael Pollan think that food miles are really bad and we should buy local. Is that really true? Well, actually, there was a study that came out recently that showed that that food miles, especially when you're looking at protein consumption, is a relatively small piece of the, the carbon pie. Um, and, and it still matters. I think if you, you, you buy food locally and you have a relatively small area in which you're shopping in, 20 to 30 miles, you can decrease your, your carbon footprint from that transportation about 1,000 transportation miles a year. But you could also decrease your carbon footprint by the, about the same amount by eating meat one day less during the year. There's one thing I really want to say about life cycle analysis. First of all, a lot of, there's big gaps in data. And the scientific community and the, the engineering community and the economics community are all trying really hard to do research and fill those gaps in data. But people should be aware that those gaps still exist. And, and, and maybe 10 years down the line, we'll have better data. But right now, many of the life cycle analyses that we're, that we're working with ha have pretty significant uncertainties. Ken, did you want to jump in? I did. You know, the most important signal that we react to as a species, for the most part, is hunger and how appetizing something is. There was a time, not too long ago, when if you went to an organic restaurant uh, or tried to shop for organic produce, you really wondered whether the food had been harvested or maybe it escaped. Um, we have come a long way in understanding how to have it both ways, have beautiful, appetizing food that you want to eat and that serves your human need for satiety and at the same time is better for the environment. You want to keep green spaces near cities. Uh, you want to have food from someone you know. Uh, you want to be able to pick from a greater variety of food locally and by doing you know, the logical thing in patronizing farmers markets, you can do that. So I think what we're seeing here is taking a holistic approach to this is what really makes sense. We're just beginning to understand some of the carbon dimensions of our food system. We can have a big impact on the environment, beneficial, big impact on our health, and still have wonderful, delicious, fresh, enticing food. Uh, do any of you espouse the Bill Clinton go vegan diet, or are you just saying meat in moderation? So I, w I would argue meat in moderation. I, I think one of the things we need to be wary of is jumping on a bandwagon that will have unseen consequences down the road. For example, taking our productive land out of production, paving it over, removing that ability to, of plants to draw carbon out of the atmosphere could have a horrible consequence on greenhouse gas emissions. And it's gonna change our rural economy and our, and, our, and our whole rural culture that we have in this country and affect our landscape, our biodiversity, our water, water yield and water quality. There's many different ways in which maintaining our agricultural lands and agriculture is gonna have a positive impact on our lives. So I think we agree that you need to eat less meat. I think that can have a positive impact on, on health and also on the environment, but I don't think, at least from my perspective, I, I think people make their own choices. But I, don't, I would be worried that, that we, would, we, we would see negative impacts on the environment by removing meat from what is an omnivorous diet. Uh, what role do factory farms play in it? Are they evil? Should we do away with factory farms? Or are they a necessity that we're going to have to have, then we ought to manage them better? Celine, do you buy from factory farms? Uh, we buy from the whole gamut of food uh, producers so, yeah. now. And the reason is, it has a lot to do with availability. Um, because you, uh, can't get, you can't meet the demand. You serve 150 million meals a year. You're a half a billion dollar company. You can't get all the supply you need from boutique farmers. 1% of the beef in this country is produced in fully pasteurized system. 1%. And even though we probably serve less than 1%. There's certainly no ethical reason why we should, uh, to mix animal metaphors, hog, hog it, it all, yeah. right? Okay, you knew that was coming. I mean, there are just a lot of changes 
that the industry recognizes, a lot of the industry recognizes, um, need to be changed. And many producers are actually waking up and thinking about new ways of doing things. I mean, I've been encouraged by the farmers that I've talked to over the summer, and so many of them are really trying to do things differently, that that encourages me. It encourages me a lot. Um, uh, yes, sir. A couple of comments about fish seafood, uh, Ohio seafood. But um, do you, does anybody have any suggestions in terms of if you're going to eat less beef and you like seafood, what's the carbon footprint? Not to mention uh, sort of you know, ruining the oceans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Wendy? Yeah, I can comment on that. So we've been trying in my lab to do a little research on figuring out the carbon footprints of some other sources of protein, and fish is a really difficult one. In fact, we just had a discussion on the way over here how difficult it was, um, partially because some of our fish is flown in, and again, that's going to have a large carbon footprint. Um, and there's been very few life cycle analyses and very few carbon studies that have looked at, at eating fish. So stay tuned. I think that this is something that's going to be have more focus in the scientific community in the future, and we'll be able to provide more information. The preliminary data say that if you're eating local fish, and again, you're not eating too much of it, the chances are, and, and, and wild-caught fish, although we can't support too much wild-caught fish with our, with our population, um, that your carbon footprint's going to be a little lower than it is if you're eating uh, chicken, beef, or pork. Next question, please. I'd actually like to ask about the uh, $812 billion elephant in the room that's not been mentioned at all, and that is in regards to the 2012 Farm Bill. So my question is how consumers can get involved, because at this point, there is absolutely no climate impact consciousness being put into the bill. There is absolutely no hearings being held in any cities in the United States for any consumer feedback, so I'd like to see and hear how farm you bill. all might address that issue. It's an excellent question. This, will, uh, this next farm bill will be my ninth that I've worked on. I started in the Lincoln administration, I think, <laughs> so there's something around there. I've been doing it a long time, um, and you are absolutely right. Uh, it is a critical piece of legislation. Unlike the climate bill or some other uh, legislation that comes before legislators in Washington. This is one that has to pass for lots of technical reasons. They have to reauthorize the bill or we throw ourselves back to 1930s law and regulation that would be a disaster economically for trade and lots of other reasons. People need to be aware of it and get involved. There are more and more ways to get involved. There's a lot of awareness in the Bay Area now. I think there were a lot of people who are un unhappy with the way the last farm bill unfolded. But if you don't speak up as consumers, you can count on the fact that the farm lobby is not going to speak up for you. Uh, so there can be breakthroughs, but it doesn't happen if you don't pay attention. And we're at the Environmental Working Group going to be spending a lot of time, as other groups around the country are, getting people engaged and recognized. Look at our website, see how we're spending that farm subsidy money. If you like the investment portfolio you see, then, you know, change channels and, and off you go. If you don't, get in touch with us or any of the other public interest organizations that are standing up and saying, enough is enough, let's start investing in a different food system.